Welcome to the Go Pitch Win Podcast, the show where entrepreneurs pitch their best business ideas to our industry leaders. Each week, one will move forward towards the grand prize, $10,000, one winner. So get ready. And now, here's your host, Greg Mercer. Welcome to this week's episode of Go Pitch Win. This week, we're joined by guest judge Nick Loper. Nick Loper helps people earn money outside of their day job. He's an author, online entrepreneur, and host of what was nominated the best business podcast, The Side Hustle Show. He features new part-time business ideas each week. And as the chief side hustler of SideHustleNation.com, he loves deconstructing the tactics and strategies behind building extra income streams. Nick, how are you doing today? Doing excellent, Greg. Thanks for having me on here. We're really excited to have you on. I appreciate you joining me as a guest judge to judge Ben and Jared from Talent Cloud's business idea. Ben and Jared, how are you guys doing? Good, Greg. Thanks for having us uh, on the podcast. We're big fans of uh, Jungle Scout and everything that you guys have done. And so we're definitely very stoked to share with you our idea for, for Talent Cloud and, and get some good feedback. I echo the same as Ben. Excited to be here and uh, we look forward to pitching Talent Cloud to you guys. Excellent. Well, that being said, let's jump right into it. Tell us a little bit more about Talent Cloud and go ahead and uh, present to us what other materials you have. It's time for today's business idea. What is Talent Cloud? What is the pain that we're trying to solve? Um, you know that you're solving a, a pain when people are making memes about it. And so many people have seen this one of the small boy looking skeptical at the lady. You know, in this case, he says, let me get this straight. The job will give me experience, but I can't get the job unless I have experience. And that was sort of the pain that Jared and I had experienced when we were going to school together. It was just this idea of we, we wanted these really great jobs from all these companies, but what we found is companies aren't so interested in this. With so many college graduates today, companies aren't so interested on, in your academic ability as they are in your experience. And there just weren't a whole lot of opportunities for us to complete you know, relevant work and gain experience for the jobs and the companies that we're trying to work for. And so with this pain, we wondered if other students were experiencing this exact same problem. So we went and we interviewed 50 um, students from four different universities and, and we just approached them and we just talked to them about what, the, what it was like finding a job after graduating and, you know, and uh, we found that all of them had the same exact problem that we did. And in addition to asking them if they were experiencing this problem, we asked them, well, if there was like a website or an app or something that would connect you with project-specific work relevant to your degree that you could complete and get paid for, is that something that you would be interested in? And the results were overwhelmingly positive. Everybody was game for that. So on the other side of the coin, we thought, well, okay, the students are in, but what about the companies and businesses? How interested are they in connecting with university talent. And so we interviewed some businesses in the surrounding areas of the universities and just asked them, like, have you ever connected with the university student before to complete project specific work? And there were very few, but almost all of the, you know, 60% of the companies and businesses that we did interview said, yes, we're super interested in connecting with university students. So we realized that there were these pains that the companies were feeling and the students were feeling, and we wanted to come up with a solution to connect the two. So Talent Cloud, in a nutshell, seeks to solve three problems with one solution. Students need to find project-specific work. Small businesses need to find the right talent at the right price. And large businesses need to find the right graduates to hire. So we feel like all of these concepts, all these pain points can overlap to one solution, Talent Cloud. So starting with the students, the students with Talent Cloud are empowered to find relevant paid projects um, through Talent Cloud while they are students. So they can build up their portfolio, their resume, and uh, be prepared to be hired full time. This enabled, Talent Cloud then enables small businesses to have free access to Talent Cloud's database of university branded students for project specific work. So local businesses, alumni can connect with students at their desired university uh, to find the right student for the right task. And then at the tail end of this, big businesses can gain access to Talent Cloud's database of university branded students vetted through Talent Cloud. So uh, the whole 
model generates around creating a database of vetted students that are rated um, by doing these small projects and they're vetted. So by the time they're ready to be hired full time, we have lots of data on these students doing real live projects. So it's not just an interview and a resume. It goes in a little bit deeper. So let's, let's take a brief look at the market potential. So according to National Center for Education Statistics, 2.8 million recent college students are hired every year. So that includes undergraduates, masters, graduate degrees. And uh, from the National Association of Colleges Employers, it's close to $4,000 per hire. So this creates a total available market of $11.2 billion every year to hire recent graduates. The revenue stream that we had originally adopted that we sort of uh, proved wouldn't be sustainable in the long run is the broker fee for each completed project, meaning for every project that got completed by the student and the business, we would just take a percentage off of it. Now, we don't want to just eliminate a revenue stream. So while we would keep the broker fee for the, each project that got completed, the real revenue stream that would be the, the, the blood that would pump through Talent Cloud is the yearly subscription that large business and corporations could, could subscribe to to tap into this pool of vetted Talent Cloud students. And that would be how we would utilize this database that we're creating with all of these experienced students that are ready to go into the workforce. So let's look at what makes Talent Cloud different from the solutions that are already existing in the market. Typically, most of these competitors have a standard area to list jobs or projects, and then a place where students can list themselves or fill out an application. So for example, Uloop claims they have over 1 million students nationwide using what we feel is an antiquated platform. So how are we different and why are we better? Number one, students are branded by the university in our platform. So businesses can search for students at specific schools. This is particularly advantageous for local businesses and connections to alumni. Number two, Talent Cloud will have a rich database of individually vetted students. Algorithms will rate students primarily based on real projects, real past projects. Number three, Talent Cloud, as I mentioned earlier, solves three problems with one solutions with the students, the small businesses, and the large businesses. We're an overlapping all in one, one stop shop solution. And we don't feel any of these competitors can answer all that. What is the next step for Talent Cloud? And, you know, what would this 10 grand do? to support Talent Cloud's future. The biggest hurdle that Talent Cloud is facing right now is Jared and I, while we feel like we have a really good idea here and we've validated it and have done tons of research, neither of us know how to code. And so the biggest hurdle that we need to jump is we need to get uh, Talent Cloud in a functional platform where we can start collecting students and collecting small businesses and um, building up the database so that large businesses now have a pool that they can tap into and look into and students can connect and get, start completing projects and get paid. And so uh, while there is definitely amounts that we would put towards, you know, what it costs to host the website or if we want to push this out on Google AdWords or Bing ads, um, obviously there's always research and development that we need to keep doing. The, the majority um, of our, our, our goal and our future moving forward is really putting together a platform that can begin to uh, host uh, our vision. Okay, so that uh, concludes our portion of the Talent Cloud presentation. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'd like to open it up to any questions. I still don't fully understand uh, what the platform does here. Are students looking for projects on this platform or are they looking for jobs after they graduate? I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. I think what it is for the student, the student can find more projects, like uh, you know, project-specific work that's relevant to what their degree is. If I'm a photographer, I need to find somewhere that I can take real pictures and then have, be able to put that on my resume and get paid for it. And then on the business side, to solve the issue for larger companies that are recruiting these college graduates, they can then recruit those students from that pool. Does that, does that make sense? So it does both then. It's a place for college students to find projects. They do these projects. It's added like as a badge to their profile. And then it's also a place for them to then get a job. And that's how they, you know, show that they have relevant experience in that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, 
so why would a business want to post a project on uh, Talent Cloud as opposed to like Upwork or something else? So the, the advantage that we feel we bring to the table is our revenue model is based off of the larger corporations, the larger businesses. So we feel we can provide uh, the right talent for the right price. So our, our system vets the students. So a, a business, a small business can say they want to take a, a higher risk for a lower cost or lower risk um, for a better uh, for a higher cost, if that makes sense. So I guess the the value prop that you're giving to small businesses or whatever businesses use this is that you can find talent on this platform for less expensive. It's primarily the the monetary play. We'll add to that, Greg, uh, that um, companies and small businesses are interested in not just connecting with a freelancer like from Upwork, but specific freelancers from, you know, a university that's nearby them. I, I think that the interest, there's a huge interest that small businesses and companies are interested in connecting with university talent, somebody from a specific university or making that connection. So in addition to, you know, maybe being not as expensive as a freelancer from Upwork, I think there's definitely value in making a connection with a university student versus some random freelancer. And then the monetization strategy is to charge the small businesses a fee to post these projects? No, I'm sorry. The The two revenue streams would be, the first one would be just taking a, a broker fee percentage for each one of the projects that are completed. Whatever the business pays the student, we take a small portion, a small percentage of that. But as Jared pointed out, the main lifeblood of Talent Cloud in order to be sustainable would be larger businesses and companies subscribing to tap into that pool of talent cloud students. Once you build the database of enough students with enough project history, then you feel like businesses will be willing to pay money to have access to that database to find future or like entry level talent uh, for their companies. Correct. Nick, what kind of questions do you have? Well, I was curious about the same thing. Like, you know, why is why somebody's going to go through this platform versus some of the other hiring platforms, especially for one-off projects? Um, you know, if I'm a if I'm a small business owner, I like I want somebody who's the most qualified, not necessarily. Well, like, I, I get there is something to that. Like, I want to support my alma mater. Like, I want to you know help kids that are starting out and so maybe there is something maybe that's a, a pull for for some business owners absolutely and i think just to add to that because we we've, we've you know had this this same question pop up before and i think that there's something there's more advantages to hiring student talent just outside of you know connecting with university's talent but university students have an access to so much resources and guidance and mentors that can really ensure project quality because, you know, they're being represented, you know, they're representing their school a little bit. So they're definitely going to put their best foot forward. And I think also with the ranking system that we would have in place to rank the project and rank the student and how well they did that, it's really going to bring forth a, a solid product for the, the small business. As Ben mentioned earlier, we're interested in building this database. So having small businesses do projects with students is advantageous for us. So it's not necessarily that we need to try and make money off of that. We can provide the best cost and help them find the right students uh, to get those projects done. And then our slice of the pie comes later with the larger corporations. Yeah, because you said the first the first projects on kind of like the uh, the marketplace model, the uh, we'll take a percentage of the project, like those didn't work out so well. And it's like, well, do you really want to be in the middle of you know client client contractor disputes and all this stuff? Um, but I don't know, how, how does it really solve this? You, you showed the meme at the beginning of, well, I need the job to get the experience and I need the experience to get the job. But like, okay, so in the photographer example, okay, I need somebody to come take pictures for my auto body shop. And if that person doesn't have any experience taking pictures, like how do they, it's still, you know, there's still that kind of chicken or the egg problem at the very onset. Yeah, no, I think that's that is that's a hundred percent right. And maybe the photographer um, one is is a pretty basic example because photographers these days, if they have a camera in their hands and they can take a black and white, they're a pretty good photographer, right? And now, I think that when it comes down to project specific work, there could be uh, there's definitely a demand for accounting specific projects. You know, if some student who's studying accounting and they're taking these advanced accounting courses, and uh, you know, a small business needs help organizing or understanding how to do 
like uh, uh, we had a recent, uh, we had a project go through where there was a small business who didn't have a good effective way for doing payroll and making sure that people were getting paid in the right way and tracking hours and how to build those to clients. So a BYU student went in and reorganized that for them so that they actually had a more functional, you know, even teaching them how to use QuickBooks or doing something like that. So I think that something more um, along those lines versus like taking pictures of cars or those types of projects where it's really providing more value for a business that they might not be in a best position to be able to do. Uh, th- does that kind of shed some light on that? Okay. So it's kind of hiring, um, you know, a, a, like a, a junior consultant or, you know, somebody for uh, like an intern project for, you know, whatever you, whatever you need done and a tap in, Hey, this is relevant to my coursework. And, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to find somebody from the local university uh, to get that done. Um, yeah, I think so. And and then I think just to go back to your original question too, then is just like, well, now on my resume, I can say like, hey, I, I went and I worked for the Delio and I helped set up their accounting program so that they could do payroll and top of QuickBooks. I think that on a resume from a student who's now going to go and apply for you know, one of the big four accounting firms, they can see that this person knows how to take real life concepts and execute on them versus, you know, just saying, you know, here's the classes that I took on accounting or, you know. Yeah. And there's no question. It's a huge, it's a huge market and there's benefits to both parties. It's just, um, you know, the, 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 similar to the um, experience problem is the marketplace challenge is like, there's no reason for students to join until there's a critical mass of companies. And there's no reason for companies to join until there's a critical mass of students. And so I'm curious if you guys have studied the, the, you know, other marketplaces like the Airbnbs and the Ubers of the world, like how they've kind of managed the supply and demand side as they've scaled up. Yeah, I think Jared would be in a good position to answer this question because we've, we've talked about this all the time. Like, who do we approach first? Do we approach the students or do we approach the businesses? And I think he has sort of a, a good angle on this one. Yeah, I think that's a, a great question. And I would say that's one that we haven't completely found the answer to that. I mean, I think that's something that we're working through and, and deciding on how we're going to build that. And I think we've gone about that is just by doing case study projects, you know, that's the only way to actually build it is to show that there's value. You know, we can't have thousands of students suddenly subscribe or thousands of business suddenly. It's just not going to happen. So, I mean, what it comes down to is showing the value through one-off projects and more of a grassroots effort to get uh, larger corporations, small businesses and students to come on here and use it. And if we manage it correctly and do it the right way, uh, these projects will, will prove valuable and show that it actually works. Where's the project at right now? Do you have anything built or this part at this point, it's still a concept or where are we at? We've kind of gone back and forth. At one point we had, you know, a website that we kind of put together on Wix and we had students that were signing up for that. But the information that we were collecting was like the student, what university they attended, what their major was, what their project was. And just of the fifth, you know, the four different universities. So we probably had, you know, close to 200 students that we interviewed and gathered information from. And then on the same side, uh, from the business side, you know, going back to that chicken and egg, you know, we had talked to maybe, you know, we had called, you know, almost a hundred businesses, you know, and got, got some information, some interest from them. So we have sort of like the, the very beginning stages of getting students and getting businesses for it. Um, we have that data, we have that information, and then as far as moving forward with it, like I said, we have the mock-ups, we have sort of the idea of how we want everything to function. It's just a matter of, of finding somebody that can make all those cogs turn. Does, does that make sense? That answer your question. Yeah. Have you thought about what ways you could uh, start this project without having to spend, you know, in there you had like $9,000 for the development. Um, realistically, you know, if you were to build this whole platform from scratch, you wouldn't be able to get it done for 9,000. You might be able to like hack together kind of like an existing CMS with some changes and whatever else and do that for 9K. Um, But have you thought about how you could test this concept before hiring developers? Because they're really expensive and it takes a long time uh, to do dev work. Um, Yeah, and I think that's kind of echoed a little bit earlier in our our journey with the minimal viable projects. 
but I think what, with the change in the pivot that we made, I think that was, you know, we learned that the model we were trying to do is not going to work through those projects. And I think essentially what we want to do is the same thing for larger corporations and see really what their, their interest is and needs on using a platform like this. Um, and that would probably involve doing a very similar thing, doing a minimal viable project and or conducting interviews with hiring managers and HR of some of these larger businesses. How many students and projects do you feel like you have to host on your platform before it's of enough value for these uh, companies to pay you a yearly subscription to have access to these people? That's a great question, Greg. Um, and I think that's one that we have yet to vet. And I think it's, uh, if we kind of hashed it out with the smaller businesses, but as far as looking at larger businesses and corporations, that's a big question mark and one that I think would, would take some vetting. So that's one of the areas that funding would, would be used for is testing those areas and seeing what, what the value is. Are there any schools that are doing this well on just a university level, like a local level? Like, hey, we built this, here's, here's our you know, student database, like companies can have access to it, something like that. It feels like something a career center at maybe, maybe like a Silicon Valley school or maybe someplace else like would have built already. I know that from our university experience at BYU-Idaho, they did have you know, exactly how you describe it, sort of a career center where they were trying to pair up graduate students with internship opportunities and job opportunities. Um, and, you know, that's the only one that I can think of that I've personally experienced with. And my experience with it was poor. Uh, you know, it didn't land me any kind of internship or any kind of job. Even navigating it was difficult. And um, it just essentially was like a, a, a job board. You know, here's some opportunities. Uh, check them out. So I, I, I think you're right. I think that other universities may have, have figured out a way. They had to have figured out a way where they're taking their best students and placing them at, um, at big companies in different places. Um, from my personal experience, though, I, I, I've not seen or, or No, I would say the same. And I, I know they exist. And, in fact, I've studied kind of what Ben said. There's a few models out there that are actually similar to part of Talent Cloud's business model. But the way we feel we're differentiated is that we're a one-stop shop for uh, students doing projects, building their portfolio, and then all the way to getting hired. So there's more of a, a process all into one platform. What's you guys' experience up to date as far as um, either like building websites or driving traffic to sites? So I actually have some experience with that, believe it or not. I started a, a, a men's baseball league in Southeast Idaho and uh, I built the website by myself. I used Wix and, uh, you know, got the analytics hooked up to it, got a Facebook page, uh, rolling Instagram, all that. And it's got a great following now. I mean, coming into our second year, I've got, you know, almost 400 likes woohoo, on the page, but you guys know, and you understand it's difficult to develop that following. So I think for me, from my personal experience of understanding, like, you know, how to, to put together a website that can attract and draw this traffic and how to do a, a good social media uh, post and making sure that the posts and things that you're doing is relevant to the user and generating likes and shares and, and traffic like that. I think I've had, you know, not a huge exposure to that, but certainly from, you know, building out that baseball league, it has definitely given me a pretty good grasp of how difficult it is to develop a strong following. One other thing I want to add to that. So Ben and I, in our professional experience, are both into marketing. So um, I, for me, I'm on the side of building, uh, I work for 3M in the marketing department and I'm, I'm building campaigns, LinkedIn campaigns, and building out content, infographics, case studies, things like that. So my experience on that end is, you know, it's, it's what I do as a professional. And on Ben's end, he's the does the pay per click for Microsoft. So our, our skills in the marketing area, we're fairly confident that once we have the concept vetted, um, we can drive it. I'm curious if there's a way to validate this with real dollars without without spending ten grand on development, without even even without even hacking together a website. Like, could you approach? HR departments, or even could you approach like existing job postings that are targeting entry level people and then go out, um, you know, proactively in, in your own network of students or the database that you do have of students and present those to that company and be like, this is just a taste of what Talent Cloud 
could be because like right now it's like well it's a great idea and i can kind of see the five-year ten-year vision of what this is there's a lot of education that has to happen inside of those hr departments to be like well this is where we go to find new talent but there's it's just it's a it's a tall mountain to climb before then so i'm curious like okay could we prove this with real dollars or you know now instead of you know waiting five years or doing all this development stuff i think you bring up a really great point and a and a, it's a great idea i think and i think that's the, the right way to do it before investing into a platform knowing that it will it's actually the the concept of it is actually needed and it, it fulfills those pain points so i think um, absolutely going out and doing those minimal viable projects, specifically the way you mentioned it, is a great way to to validate that. Thanks for sharing that. So if you won the money, you won the 10K, what would the next six months look like for you guys? I think it would be a lot of validating. Um, just as we were just talking about, I think that's really the next step is, I think we have a, we feel we have a great concept Um and we've validated portions of it, but I feel like there's a lot of question marks to fill out, and uh, that's going to take a lot of of time to really figure out those steps. And once we validate it, uh, it's a matter of marketing it and beginning to build portions of the the platform to really execute the idea. I would just add to that, you know, we've we've had the opportunity to pitch this at a couple of different university, you know, pitch competitions like this, and have received. Um, you know, a, a few thousand dollars that we've been able to put to good work. So I think just in the the area of receiving, you know, support from you know from universities or from local pitch competitions, we've we've gauged and know how to use that money wisely and put it to good work. I just don't know how far ten grand would go in getting something like this off the ground. It's it's a really daunting project, and. In a way, it's already validated. Companies are already spending money on recruiting. They're already spending money to like set up a uh, shop at career fairs to to reach these students. It's just like, wait, well, how can I siphon off a portion of those dollars, or how can I, um, you know, carve out my little piece of the pie there? Um, and I think I think there's a way to do it, but I don't know if starting with like the grandiose, like, oh, we're going to build this amazing talent cloud platform is is the way I do it kind of like I would fund it with, with customer source. Cause like, we, you know, the Airbnb, the Uber examples, right. Building these, you know, massive two-sided marketplaces. Like they didn't do it without millions of dollars in venture capital. I think that is, that is so right. And, you know, we still are, you know, so early on in the stages of understanding how big this idea is actually going to be or how far it's going to take us. And we don't, you know, we're, we're still learning and going this experience right now, being on this podcast, talking to Greg Mercer and Nick Loper has just been, so eye-opening and, and definitely pointed us in a direction that I think we have a much better feel for where we need to take this thing and more questions that need to be answered so that we are in a better position to understand how much is this really going to take? Do we really push the students firsthand or, or the businesses and understanding how it's going to flow, uh, I think has just been amazing. If I was you guys, I think I would take this one of two different routes. Route one, would be kind of like stick with your concept, but really hack together something like I'd probably just like throw up a WordPress site that has some forms and whatever else. It seemed like it would still be the same thing, but in reality, like it would just send you an email. Like when people submitted forms, like all the work was just done on the back end. So like from the website, it looks like kind of everything's there, but in real life, like you guys are just behind the scenes, like with spreadsheets and emails, like hacking this whole thing together, like to prove the concept. So that'd be option one. If I was you guys option two, I think I would, instead try to build a site that attracted students who were looking for jobs or looking for products. Um, so provide valuable content there just to start to get traffic, start to build like this, uh, this audience and authority in that particular niche. And then once you've built up kind of like that side of it, then it's a little bit easier to decide like how you're going to monetize it from there. And by then you have like more students you can talk to. Um, then you already have like, Hey, I have an email list of 10,000 students who, um, you know, are looking for these entry level positions as so we can start approaching like small businesses. And I think, uh, starting with something like that is like much more manageable with, you know, a small amount of money as opposed to like trying, cause just like Nick said, it's very hard to build like a two sided marketplace, right? You're, you have the chicken and the egg problem right from the get go. So I think those would be like a couple options where you could, um, either start to prove the concept or start to build out one side of 
the uh, you know the marketplace kind of like a lot easier. Those are fantastic suggestions. Thank you so much, Greg. Thanks, guys. This is this has been insight. awesome. Yeah, the insight we've gained from talking to you too has been uh, well worth our time, and we really really appreciate that you guys let us come on the podcast and pitch this idea to you. All right. Well, that wraps up this episode of Go Pitch Win. Thank you to Nick Lober for joining us and being the guest judge. Thank you for Ben and Jared. Best of luck with Talent Cloud, and we will let you know how our decision goes for the winner. Thanks for listening to the Go Pitch Win podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear the next great business idea, then make sure to subscribe and join us in the next episode.